welcome to the Thursday 905 Roundup uh, with me, Roland Tanner. I am Jordan McLeod. And uh, we're, uh, well, it's post-election, so we're not going to talk about any of that because everything's fine and everything's wonderful and it was a terrific time. So, and uh, we're going to talk <laughs> about, what to an extent, the next election on the horizon, which is the, the municipal one. Um, and there's... Well, there's a few developments there and there's some gossip there. I mean, the big gossip in Hamilton now, which started actually, I was partly responsible for this while the election was still happening. Um, and when I say responsible, not because I made it up, but because I mentioned it. Um, and that's the, the, the question of whether Andrea Horvath might now consider uh, running for mayor of Hamilton and whether that's a good thing, a bad thing um, or or what and uh well joel you you have one set of opinions and i have yeah i don't know what my opinion is i'm still working on it basically I, but i i get it my opinion is uh i i ultimately I, I don't think she should um and it's not because of electorability it's more of just the principle of the matter of she was a city councilor uh way way back in the day right, at the start of her her career um, before she ran uh, for the NDP and then becoming the NDP leader and then the uh, leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition at Queen's Park. To, to, to say that Andrew Horvath does not have, did not have an illustrious career in politics is an understatement. She has represented uh, Hamilton Center well, I, I would say. Uh, her, her track record has been one of, of positive things for Hamilton Center. That being said, um, I do have issues with MP, like politicians who constantly just shuffle around jobs. Uh, you know, like we, saw, we kind of saw that in the last provincial election of count, you know, Jason Farr deciding, well, I'm going to run for the liberals in Hamilton East Stony Creek, uh, albeit that was a failure. But it's this idea of like a humiliating failure. I think, I think we need an adjective there. Let's just say humiliating fair enough. failure. <laughs> but I, and I'm not saying that's going to happen to Andrea running for, for mayor, but I do think it, 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 there is a point of this municipal election. There is an appetite for change in Hamilton. We have covered it a lot in this uh, in this podcast. There is a grassroots movement of we want a new face in uh, at, at City Hall. And you have to wonder if Andrea is running. Is that really a new face? You know, it, like we we know we she's established. She we know kind of what she would do, and it's. It kind of get the sense of oh, City Hall is a consolation prize for somebody who doesn't know when to let go. I know what you mean. I, I think on the whole, I don't agree because uh, partly because I think she'd she'd win. I mean, I think if she runs, she'll win. Um, right. The, you know, there's such massive name recognition. She is, you know, even amongst people who, who've never voted for her and might never vote for her, there is a degree of respect, I think, for someone who's been around for a long time. And she, she has stature and, uh, uh, you know, unquestionably has, has, has stature. I mean, it's almost a separate question was, would she win? And, and, and would that be good in that there will be a, a change for Hamilton? And I'd say probably, and I don't think she would let the old guard well not so much that De uh, not Deanny uh, Eisenberger lets the old guard get away with stuff he, he's very well, he does let them get away with stuff and I think she would at least call out some of the uh, more atrocious behavior if it still existed but there's also there's also I mean there is a serious you know being being leader of a party and being uh, mayor of a city is a very different job Right. Um, being, uh, you know, you, you are in provincial and federal politics. You you are uh, part of a team. You know, you you're very much a team player, uh, and your team is 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 ridiculously loyal to you uh, up until the moment when you get the heave ho. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that, that's the nature of, of provincial and federal politics. Is yeah. that the part that party discipline is a key factor, and it it you know there's a the leaders know how to use that party loyalty to mm -hmm. push forward their agenda. That and I, I factor doesn't the, exist at, at municipal level. Yeah. And I think, I think the question, the, the, the problem that often happens, I mean, I saw this to an extent with uh, Cam Jackson, who was a former MPP in Burlington. 
is that you can come in and you expect municipal government to work like uh, provincial government does and maybe it should but it doesn't um you know the the you cannot come in and, and hope to be prime minister of a city um that's just not how it works you've got to you've got to be a consensus builder or if, if you want if you want a pleasant life you've got to be a consensus builder um and you've also got to accept however frustrating it, frustrating it might be that the, the city staff have in many ways the whip hand um whether they should have the whip hand is another mm -hmm. question but they do and that's just simply the way it works um uh so you know i i somewhat think someone like andrea horvath might might struggle with that and and you know take the kind of bull in a china shop approach that can go off the rails and can, can really um uh, not end happily um well the other the other factor is um her old opponent is still going to be there at doug ford like at some point as mayor of one of the largest cities in ontario you are going to go, have to go to the province kind of hat in hand and ask for something i don't i don't know what but there's i've never seen where there's never been a major infrastructure project or a, a an initiative that is <clears throat> wanted to be put forward by a city that's at some point they just have to go to the province and say either we need money or we need permission to do something um to, to extent um yeah you're right no i mean you're right uh one of the the traditional way of being a mayor is that you never uh ruffle the feathers of the province you know the, mm -hmm. again the province even more than the staff, the province holds the whip hand in, in, in municipal politics, so, as we've seen. You know, they can basically vote you out of existence on a, on a, on a whim. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't put it past Doug Ford, given that he's already done it in Toronto, to yeah. uh, do something similar in, in uh, Hamilton. So, yeah, that, that... On the other hand, I really wish... And maybe this is just me being, being a clueless dreamer... That the cities were actually more i think the cities need to start cooperating together rather than cooperating with the province um and, and that together they have a huge amount of electoral power whereas individually negotiating with the province they're always in a in a, in a weak position so I mean, well that's I the thing you're, every, every you're, city in 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 the 905 will bitch about the olt and yeah. you know the, the fact that their planning decisions get well it, you, know, you can't even get it on the provincial agenda because you're just fighting individual battles where it's like, right. well, why aren't you, you know, through, you know, the whatever well, it is, the Federation you know, of Ontario the, 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 the Association called. of yeah. Municipalities of Ontario, like you would think that you're right, that should be, it's a meeting that the, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and the Premier will go to and they, they always time, they always have individual meetings with various mayors and the, the mayor kind of again goes hat in hand oh we want to we want we want to to build this we want to fund that whatever the case may be and it's it's kind of like this you know this you know you you enter the star chamber and you you petition the the king for yeah. I mean, like, you know can yeah. i can i have permission to do this and you're right it it, it goes for a divide and conquer mentality exactly. whereas yeah. if instead the, the mayor's kind of ganged up and said no, we're going to use this as a united front. And to say, maybe to say, no, we're taking on the OLT. We need major reforms to the OLT um, uh, uh, going forward. That would be, I think that would be a game, game changer. Whether or not Andrea would be the, the person to kind of move that forward, I don't know. Because here's the thing, you say it's about consensus building. My counter argument to that is, if she was a consensus builder, she would be premier right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, like, like we just saw that like she, she did not build a consensus amongst the people of Ontario uh, to push forward an NDP agenda at Queens park. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, she, yeah. I, mean I, 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 I picture Andrew Hall with more, more in the kind of street fighter mode um, mm -hmm. and the, uh, yeah, I mean that—that's kind of her her, her vibe as leader of the opposition is, is you know, uh, which, which is fine. I mean, it's very much the traditional 
thing that leaders of the opposition do. But so it is very different. I mean, I mean, I, I think ultimately, if she chose to run, I would chose chose to run. Sorry, I would I'd welcome that in that I again, you know, winners win, and um, it certainly would. I don't feel that the the municipal election in Hamilton has quite come alive yet. No. Um, and it needs to uh, and a really stonking hot mayoral race will will bring with it change at the other levels because people will come out and vote well here here's the other the other argument um uh why i'm i'm kind of against former politician you know former levels of politician running for mayor is there's talk uh, bob bertina has also said that he's interested in throwing his hat in the ring mm -hmm. he hasn't done that yet to my knowledge he hasn't filed the paperwork no oh well yeah okay. he's, he's so declared he said verbally he, he said he said publicly I'll, i want to run but he hasn't actually you know done the work and gone down to city hall to file right. the paperwork so that remains to be seen but again it's like like where is it a fresh voice is my question and i think that's the attitude that his hamilton the, the grassroots of Hamilton want is that no, we want somebody fresh and new who's accountable to us, not some other power broker within the city. Does it, and does you know does Andrea and Bob running feed that feed that narrative? I don't think so. I think it's I think it's just again another another. Uh, uh, I don't know what the right. right no, it's, it's a fair it. point. It's a fair point, and and, and you know. She was leader of the NDP for for a long time, and obviously there's been electoral success. I I I, I kind of resent the process of of ever saying that someone who repeatedly loses elections has been a success. But in a party context, she's been a success. But innovator, not necessarily. I don't know. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's yeah, and, I, and I, so I do I, I do think. And you're right uh, that the, the someone like Keenan Loomis is, is a. I mean, his, his problem is that he's a blank slate. <laughs> this also his strength is that he's a blank slate. Yes. Um, we simply don't know what he would be like. Um, uh, or, or we can well the that, of... go by as his public pronouncements, which are which are progressive and which are which you know hit the right notes. But um, yeah, um, we'll be but, to see. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, unfortunately. It's simply, I mean, I think he, he, he you know, he's, he's got a good shout uh, as long as someone like Andre doesn't enter the race. Um, and it, again, it's just uh, politics sucks in terms of the whole name recognition thing, but, uh, but there you go. Well, why don't we take a break there uh, for our first uh, sponsor break and we'll come back with more shenanigans around the region. Okay, and we are back, uh, but we're not leaving Hamilton. That's uh, that should be said. We were uh, Hamilton, never a dull time. Uh, we can, we can say on this podcast. Uh, so, uh, old friend, may not so much friend uh, of the podcast, but Larry Deany got ruffled some feathers on social media uh, over the course of the weekend. Roland, what 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 did uh, the illustrious former mayor uh, well, say? He he. You know, he gets into these conversations. I mean, he obviously enjoys it. He enjoys being a, uh, for want of a more graceful term, shit disturber. I think. I think he, uh, you know, he obviously takes pleasure in it. So fine, whatever, whatever floats your boat, mate. But um, but he he, you know, in in conversation with someone and answering something or other, he, you know, managed to both defend two of the more, uh, well, councillor, um, uh. Oh blimey, Jackson, uh, who, who's you know been around since Adam was a lad, and uh, uh, is, is not, not the worst exa uh, example on the current uh, crop, but 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 it's certainly you know one of the old boys, so to speak. So defending him, also defending Terry Whitehead. I mean, saying well, I think Terry should should take a break this time around, but basically saying you know he's a good guy and we shouldn't be so nasty to him, despite all the you know. Evidence to the contrary. Endless examples of, of bad behavior from him. Um, and then took a pot shot at, at uh, count, you know, uh, 
the, the councillors for, for wards one and three, who he didn't even name, saying they are bad for Hamilton and they must go. Now, it just so happens that these are, are two women, which I think is relevant, um, that they are the two freshest faces on council, having been elected in 2018, uh, and that they are the... You know, they very much are at the forefront of, of the newer generation and, and newer ideas. And, and that these... Diani has, meanwhile, been at the forefront of this narrative that these are somehow, you know, communist revolutionaries trying to overthrow the... Uh, uh, trying to overthrow the I don't know what the hereditary monarchy that that is the Hamilton Council, <laughs> um, and it's ridiculous and 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 it's kind of offensive. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's not offensive to me. I don't care. But I mean, well, it's it, it's, a, it, it's offensive it, to anybody who. I mean, the fact that he puts out on Twitter, he'll he'll name Councillor Jackson by name, uh, in in this post, but then says and and it doesn't even say councillors; just refers to them as number one and three is incredibly derogatory i would say borderline sexist maybe even go as far as racist because uh, uh counselor uh narendra nan is of a uh, visible minority uh you know it just they have names they've earned the respect like you can respect the office of counselor and enough to the fact that you you may not agree with their policies that's fair enough we're a democracy you're entitled to say i disagree with your point of view uh, or your your course of action and your, your the direction you want to take the council. I disagree with that. That's my point. Not debating that, but you have respect. We've never referred to as uh, Councillor Whitehead as count. I don't even forget what ward he, he serves. I know. Yeah, I forget the number. I'm sorry. But, I but no, but he, was low enough to know. Yeah, I, I will say he's earned the respect that we say he's referred to as Councillor Whitehead, same as Councillor Marula and, and Councillor Jackson, they, Mayor Eisenberger. They have earned the right the 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 position is still valid you don't just derogatory and then you know on a follow tweet oh you know don't take it so seriously like don't you know you have followed up with a a follow-up tweet saying oh you know don't be so literal and don't be such a bleeding heart it's like no no you don't you don't have the right to tell me not to be offended or to not to not look at when somebody says i'm offended by that to say oh well you don't have any right to be you have a right to be offended more importantly as a former mayor, uh, as a former candidate for uh, the federal liberal party uh, in Hamilton East Stony Creek back in the day, you should know words matter. The phrases you use matter. You do not get to shy away from misspoken words uh, and say, oh, you know, don't take it seriously. Don't, you know, don't be so literal. Grow, suck it up and deal with it. You do, if you want to be a, engaged in the political discourse of a city, you don't have the right to shy away from it. Own own what you said. If you misspoke, or if you said, "Yeah, I'm," I'd said that in a, in a fit of passion. I'm sorry, I misspoke. My apologies. I apologize to the people in question. Okay, fine, I I can accept that. But to stand by, to stand by and say that the rest of us are are too sensitive. Um, maybe we're not the ones who are sensitive here. Yeah, I I just don't. I don't get how you can defend, and he was defending Terry Whitehead in one breath, whose behavior seems just indefensible. You know, like like Mm -hmm. mental health concerns, whatever, if, if, you know, and according to Terry Whitehead, he doesn't have any. So we can only go on his word for this. Uh, You know, that is no excuse uh, for, for consistent, just terrible, disruptive behavior. Uh, and, and I just say, anybody who, who wants to see uh, uh, John Paul Danko kind of gave a, a, a spiel in council the other day about that behaviour, uh, which was a really good um, uh, and frankly entertaining kind of takedown of, of everything to do with Terry Whitehead, and I thought it was wonderful. But yeah, you know, again, the 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 the, the Deanne kind of defending that on one hand, and then um, attacking people who. You know, whether you agree with them or not on particular policies are respectful, professional. Um, you know, whenever I've watched council meetings, uh, 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 Councillor Nan and Councillor Wilson uh, are always, you know, completely professional, completely 
reasonable, completely behaving how you're supposed to behave in a council chamber. The only reason they don't like them is, well, A, because they're strong women and old white men really hate strong women. Um, What's up with that? Yeah, I mean, and it's like, do you realize how stupid you look when you behave like this? I mean, you you see it, we saw it in uh, Mississauga recently with the councillor whose car was uh, vandalized. You know, uh, I... You know, I certainly think there was an element of that in Burlington in 2018 with, with, with you know, uh, you know again, I'll, I'll quote uh, Marianne Mead Ward, a phrase that she uses, oh, it's like, well-behaved women um, really don't get history. things done. <laughs> right. I mean, but but being, being an, a non-well-behaved woman uh, gets you just so much abuse from, 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 from the old guard at whatever level of government you're at. And I, I will completely go along with Marianne on, on that count. I, I, that's definitely a thing that happens. Um, but and we're, the, and we're, seeing it, we're seeing it here. You know, why, why doesn't Paul, John Paul Danko get the same mouthful of abuse right. as those two? Well, partly because he's probably more, you know, Danny's supposed to be a liberal somewhere along the lines or was, and, and Danko's maybe more of that kind of centrist uh, politically. But really, they're, 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 there's no difference between them other than two are, two are women uh, and one's a man. Right. Well, here's the thing you want, you want for somebody who, who demands so much respect be given to the old guard or to, to himself. So little being given out is quite telling. Um, you know, you cannot demand, I, you can't sit there and say, I demand respect. Uh, and I, I demand to be heard and I demand to, to be listened to. And at the same time, be so dismiss, dismissive of People who and their, and their rights, they are elected. They have they have supporters. They have they have earned the right to give their opinions in council chambers. As much as, and I will say this: Terry Whitehead has earned the right to give his opinion in council chambers. He got elected. We vehemently disagree with a lot of those points of view, and quite frankly, to the point where say you've lost the respect of of the popu- of your the populace and your fellow councilors because you don't give the respect. Like it, yeah, it, it, and you, you don't you have the right to to be the counselor that you want to be within the rules of procedure and within the the rules of decorum and uh, and civility that we expect of elected officials and that's what whitehead doesn't 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 have he no. you know that the he is a hand grenade lobbed into the center of of the council chamber at every meeting he attends and you know Thankfully, he doesn't attend all of them, or even well, you, the majority of them. You can't, you can't be effective if every time you walk into a into a boardroom or into a meeting room, your first reaction is, "I'm going to kick over the table and throw uh, throw the papers up in the air and say, demand that you listen to what I have to say." Nobody, like, ask anybody in in the course of time, no matter what business you're in, nobody respects that person. Nobody. You you sit there quietly, and wait for them to leave, and you say, "Okay, can now we begin the the business of the day?" That, that's what this is the you don't you don't show disrespect to people who quite frankly have earned it and they haven't in my opinion counselors Wilson and counselor not uh, have not thrown that respect away they you may not agree with their their politics or their point of view that's that's perfectly fine but to say they haven't earned your respect that's uh that that's that's telling on on you, I think, uh, and, and and your your values. And I, I just don't get, you know, what they are supposed to have done that is so bad, other than some new ideas. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, <laughs> is is like... new so so chat? Like that's what I, that, I guess it comes back to the old white man arguments. Like, is that the is that the the danger here? Is that oh, it's it's new and different therefore it must be bad like it is that it is a scary that much that hmm maybe maybe this is an idea worth pursuing maybe maybe just experiment with it and see what happens is well, that and, is that that terrifying that thus far i think um the t- the two counselors concerned have ignored this kind of stuff as is the usual thing to do in politics is just pretend it doesn't exist and eventually it will go away but um they both actually responded to 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 the tweet with some panache you know and the councillor wilson pointed out it's like you know this is a guy who's just pissed off because he wanted a free seat on council uh, for a year in stony creek after um 
uh, Brad uh, Clark uh, was elected to uh, to um, Ottawa, and and they were part of the majority of councillors who voted against the Annie. Now, part of the majority, perhaps also at the forefront of organising that majority, <laughs> but but nevertheless, um, you know, th- th- there's a huge amount of sour grapes here um, mm. uh, from from a guy who who you know, had his time, won his elections, um, and it's just annoyed now that, that, that he's no longer relevant. And um, yeah, sorry, Larry, you're, you're, you know, you're just making a fool of yourself. You really are making a fool of yourself and no one's buying what you're selling. Um, you know, the, the people who are going to be voting in the election, those, those councillors are going to be re-elected yeah. very easily because um, they've been outstanding. Um, and yeah, shut up. Um, you know, if you want to defend the other, the councillors in the other wards, sure, go for it. That's that's your right. Um, but the voters who are going to be voting in Terry Whitehead's ward don't care about Maureen Wilson or Narinda Nan because they're not voting for her. Um, so yeah, yeah. It, it's just all right. Well, let's we have one final thing to chat about and it's a bit and it's still a bit of an update on uh in burlington uh there's a bit of an update on in terms of city council's policies so, yeah so i mean the city council so the, the root of the whole um ward for closed session meeting um stramash i know that's a, probably not a word that's used much in canada but anyway fight whatever conflict controversy um was that for the last two years shorter stolte had been pressing for an update to the closed meeting session protocols um and basically the other councillors had resisted this and said there's no need there's no need there's no need it's fine it's fine it's fine all this exploded into the integrity commissioner report um, of a few weeks ago um, uh, and uh, and a review by um, the uh, the closed session meeting dudes, a list of the, the the people who are paid to sort of check if if closed session meetings are within the rules. And finally, it, it also resulted in a review of the closed session meeting protocols. Now, the mayor will pretend has pretended. And other councillors will pretend and have pretended that, oh, well, actually, this came from other councillors. You know, it wasn't, you know, uh, we're always supportive of this. No, they weren't. They were forced into it. And when it looked like Shauna Stolte might get her name on it, they made sure that they stole the thing and put their name on it and they passed it. So that's the kind of small minded bullshit that goes on in council councils across the province. You know, I'm not going to say it's unique to Burlington. But no, this this came as a result of Shauna Stolte's pre- pressure. It has now, there is now a, an updated closed session meeting pro- protocol. I haven't looked at the details of it to see um, in detail if there are changes and what those changes are. But congratulations, at least, to Shauna Stolte for having got it that far. Um, and no, they'll have found a way to make sure that her name is not attached to it in any way, shape or form, but it's entirely down to her that it's happened. So uh, well, well done on that front. You have to qu- wonder what's, I mean, the, the whole rigmarole over disciplining her and, and sending her to the integrity commission, like what, it's, here, here's the thing. Her whole, her whole beef was we don't have a policy. Like there's no guidance. It's just whenever we talk about something that remotely at some point we might have to go into closed session, well, the entire meeting goes into, cl- into closed session. Well, that's overkill. And we don't actually have a guidance of like, well, when exactly is it that we should be going? That's what she was ultimately asking for is I want to know the exact topics that we should be going in and out of an in-camera session, as opposed to saying, oh, we're going to talk about the, let's say the Robert Bateman high. We want to talk about purchasing it. Okay. So the entire meeting has to be in camera. Like we can't figure out what exactly we should, you know, some of this has to be in public. This is a using public money to buy public land, don't do this behind closed doors. Um, I find this interesting though, that now she's, you know, this 
the fact that a new a change in policies come forward kind of implicitly says she had a point. She was right. There, there was no policy. We needed a policy in doing it. And so to me, it comes across a bit petty to have city council all of a sudden now say, oh, well, we had a, we had a discipline because she broke the rules. Like, okay, maybe. Do you need to find her uh, five days salary? It was like, you know, you know, it's kind of one of the things like maybe you may, if, you, if you're going to admit to her, like, well, you had, a, you had a point. We don't have a policy. We need a policy. Well, she, she pushed it to the extreme and, and, uh, not well, to, I have to get to this point. She, she, yeah, but she, she pushed the issue and pushed the issue, made herself unpopular with her colleagues, made herself unpopular with staff. Um, and that, you know, again, can I quote Marianne Mead Ward? Well behaved women don't succeed in politics. Uh, Shauna Stolte was a badly behaved woman in politics, and she's, <laughs> to be honest, followed the Marianne Mead Ward playbook uh, of like, I am not going to stop. I am going to keep on bitching about this, even right. if I'm the one person on council, even if I'm driving you crazy, and I am going to stick with it until you give me a concession. Now, she's got a concession. I don't think it's going to, I say, I haven't looked to the new protocol to see if there's any significant. Uh, changes and I, I will do that um and i'll also be interested to see how agendas and minutes coming out of council to see if there's any change in uh, how they're um being put but together it does, but it does but say something be that, interesting to see but but it, it does but, say something uh, that the, that role reversal right that yeah. mayor Mar mary mead ward when she was first elected as a city council for ward two came on as kind of this rebel rebel with a cause we're going to change the way things are done. Um, and she gets to become mayor. And all of a sudden it's very much, you know, oh, did we have to, the rules are there. We have to follow the rules. The rules are there for a reason. You have to respect the process. And yeah, you're, you're right. Shauna Stolte said, well, no, these rules don't, they don't make any sense. There's, they lead to more secrecy. They lead to things being done behind closed doors in a democracy, which is very uncomforting. And she kind of kept kicking down the door, kicking the door open, so the rest of us could see what's going on. Um, I think in the end, like the the winner here is Shauna Stolte. Like they I, they can hide her name off the off the final uh, passage of the bylaw, whatever. But in the end, I mean, we all know why this came came about. It's because of Shauna Stolte. Yeah, and I I, I, mean, abs I absolutely think that's the case and I, I felt that was likely to be the case from the outset it's like you know you want to, now i mean i think shauna was i'm using first names here i mean I, yeah i know shauna probably better than most of the other counselors or probably any of the other counselors however so bias whatever you want to say fine uh but but yeah, I mean, it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna defend the status quo, and there's another councillor who's gonna take issue with the status quo, nine times out of ten, the one taking issue with the status quo is gonna come out come out looking like the good guy. And I think Sean Stolte has absolutely done that. But I mean, I think with abs deservedly so. And I think Marianne Mead Ward, if she wasn't mayor in a previous council in a previous situation, would have been lining up with Shauna Stolte to be yeah. on her side. And I think it's tragic that, that that now we have this. Oh well, no, everything's 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 fine, and you know, don't break the rules. And this kind of you know, it's exactly the kind of arrogance that drove people nuts under the old council. And we're seeing it with spades from councillors like um, I'm sorry, Rory Nessam, but you are the worst defender. Um, this, this kind of institutional arrogance of how dare you question who we are? How dare you question the way we do things? It's like, screw it, no. That's exactly what we're supposed to do is question you. We can't trust you because if when we don't trust politicians, we trust politicians, they screw us over. It's like, be realize where you come from, realize why you were elected, realize what... what <laughs> Just because you feel that you're a good guy and you won and that you're trustworthy doesn't mean that you're different and exempt from the same things that, that, that those guys that you booted out were, were, were subject to. You know? So it, it, it's the shortness of memory that gets me. Like, do you yeah. not remember how you used to be? Um, but I, I'm very disappointing from, from I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to name Roy Nissan in particular and Councillor Galbraith. But um, no. Uh, 
certainly in the sans case kind of being a champion of of you know could not line himself up more closely with Marie Anne Meadward if he tried uh, when he was running for election and, and since then and kind of like yeah you know we're the we're the new brooms and we're going to sweep and then becoming this kind of face of small c conservatism on council of of being the most vocal defender of 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 that institutional self-righteousness that I loathe um I don't know why you would want to do that I mean it's gonna be fine you know this election in Burlington is probably going to be very boring um uh, uh, if one or two councillors change that would be the most and uh, you know it, it, it's very difficult to to mm -hmm. to to change councillors and those change elections don't come along very often um but but nevertheless eventually this stuff will catch up with you and and also why do you want to be that guy why do you want to be that yeah. that that how dare you guy on council uh, it's a loathsome position and i do not understand why you would be in politics and want to be like that you know what let's round off the episode on that because i have nothing more to add <laughs> That uh, was a good rant. I'm sorry. It was. It was a good, way, a good way to close off the episode. So thanks very much, everyone. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, with another episode of the 905er. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.